when you're at a, a place of burnout, the healing is in reconnecting to our true identity. Hey friends, it's Dr. PBJ here again, and I have another episode of Women Who Define Disruption. Let me tell y'all something. This is a season in my life where God is allowing me to encounter and to connect with powerful women. And when I say powerful women, I'm talking about women who are living in purpose, but are also pulling that purpose out of others. And today I have the honor of introducing you all to a woman from the first meeting with her, from my first interaction with her, my heart was set on fire to do the thing that God has called me to do. And we've had several calls since then and meetings, and she's invited me to speak at her conference. And every time I engage with this powerful woman. I feel energized to go do the thing that I was created to do. So I I know you want to meet her. I know you want to meet her, but just a few things. So Dr. Alicia Ritchie, first of all, she's a national board certified educator. Now, if you are an educator, you know what that means. That means the top in the country. Not just that, not just that, but Dr. Ritchie created national curriculum to develop culturally responsive educators in schools and community-based programs across the country and beyond. Listen, nobody can tell it like she can tell it, so I'm going to bring her up, but when I tell you this woman lights a fire in my belly every time I talk to her, I cannot wait for you all to hear what she has to share. Dr. Richie, welcome to the Thank Disrupting you. Burnout Project. Thank you for having me, Dr. Patrice Jackson. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So let's get into it. And I want to start, I always start by you telling the people who you are. Absolutely. And I'll start by saying that I am the expression of God. Um, and I lead with that. Um, I am the expression of his love. I'm the expression of his joy, his peace, his righteousness, his balance, right? The expression of his balance. I think of the scripture that a false balance is an abomination, but a just weight is his delight. So I I like to think that I represent that in my life. and, And I see the relationship between that scripture and even the work that you do to disrupt burnout. Because for me, disrupting burnout is disrupting that false balance that uh, people uh, adopt and embrace as a way of life. And so I like to think of of myself as um, God's best in the earth, Mm -hmm. Um, because I believe that we are called to express his best in the earth. Oh my gosh. So I don't I don't lead with my, you know, my occupation or vocation. You know, I lead with you asked, who are you? Yes. And so I, I want to start. That's a part of the disrupting burnout. We often define ourselves in the doing. Mm. And today I want to define myself in the being. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so defining yourself as God's best. I I have to part right there for a minute. I have to part right there for a minute because I myself have recognized recently Mm -hmm. that I have struggled Mm -hmm. to identify as my true identity, as who I am, Mm -hmm. as God's best. That There may have been lessons in our lives where we learned that that's not humble, Mm -hmm. where we learned that that is a prideful thought, but I've gotten to a place where I feel like it's my responsibility. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. It yeah. is. It, it, so, yeah. Dr. Richie, if you gave me a gift, mm -hmm. if you gave mm -hmm. me a precious gift and I just tossed it to the side mm -hmm. and acted mm -hmm. like I didn't own it because I wanted to be humble, right. that does not honor the gift you gave right. me. Right, right. But if I if I honor that gift, if I share cherish it, if I share it, then that gives honor to the value of the gift. Absolutely. So we don't honor God or anybody else by pretending that we are not God's best. That's right. That's right. And just to share an example, I recall, I'll never forget when um, my pastor, my spiritual leader said, and I, we were sitting uh, and I, it escapes me where we were, um, but I recall being in conversation with him and he made a comment and he said, I am Christ. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wait, that's blasphemy. And he said, you are too. And I said, I, quite honestly, I said, no, sir, brother. <laughs> mm -mm. You can't get me to join it. <laughs> no, sir, you go to hell by yourself <laughs> on that one. <laughs> I won't be joining you there. And then as I paused, um, the spirit spoke to me and said, if I call your head, Alicia, will your body not respond also? So if you are the body of Christ. How is it that you cannot reference yourself as Christ in the earth? Ooh. And it occurred to me that my relationship with God was one of decapitation. So the head was over here and the body was over here, right? And so how then, if we are separate and apart, how then do I express who he is except that we are one? And so, you know, when you talk about this notion of humility, it's a part of that false balance. Like it, it doesn't match. Mm. And so, you know, as I began to think about who am I, I can only identify, identify myself as who God is. After all, we're one. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, so talk to us about how you express that in the earth. What does that look like, Dr. Richie? It looks like, uh, for me, it looks like asking him, what is it? Because the expression has to be intelligible to the people that we are communicating the message to, right? Mm -hmm. And so I can say to you, I love you. But if you don't understand love in that way, then I have my love is not intelligible, right? It's it's not uh, understood. And in reality, it's insignificant, mm -hmm. right? Because it has no impact. Like I can't impact you if I'm not communicating with you in a way that is understood to you. Yes. And so in each space that I occupy, the question becomes, God help me to understand these people how how will they in your wisdom how can i best serve them in a way that they understand that there's something unique about what they are experiencing mm -hmm. and so that's what it looks like for me whether it is in my writing that they leave that experience saying wait a minute there's something very different about this because i think that difference is what prompts them to want more prompts them to want to understand more. And then it opens the door for me to be able to say, without saying, that was God. Here's what you just displayed for us. Because sometimes we've been taught that our expression of God is held for within the walls of a church. Absolutely. Or a holy place, right? Absolutely. But what you just described is no matter where you show up, virtually, in person, a school, a company, mm -hmm. in your writing, in your publishing, no matter in your events, no matter where you show up, no matter where, no matter where you, you show up, bring, you are the expression of God in that space. And in a way that mm -hmm. the people can understand. Exactly. And, some, and, and that expression of God is in his excellence, in the, you know, in the brilliance, in the splendor. And so when I um, take on a project as an example, and I am committed to excellence, or I'm committed to giving them my best, what I'm saying is that I'm giving you God. Come on. 
And again, if I'm giving you God um, in a way that's only intelligible in the four walls of a church, but I can't reach government, I can't reach the education sector, I can't reach the business sector, then the gospel I preach is ineffective. Come on. Right. So there, I, I, I haven't shown that I'm an able minister, right? A, a, unless I'm able to express God again in a way that people can understand for whatever is the space that we occupy. Mm. Yeah. As you're speaking, I hear marketplace ministers. Yeah. We Absolutely. are ministers no matter where we go. And minister just means to serve. Like the there word is. minister there literally is. means there to serve. There it is. There so it wherever is. you are serving, that place is where you minister. That place right. is where you are the expression of God. And right. the key that you're teaching us is in the way that the people can consume it. Absolutely. If you're speaking above their heads or if you're trying to force feed something they're not ready to receive, you're not being effective. Mm -hmm. That is not mm -hmm. effective ministry. Right. It's right. not effective education. It's right. not effective work. When we leave, people should know that they've been impacted by something they've never experienced. That's right. Before. That's right. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, they should. How did you become aware of this in your life? Have you always known that you are the expression of God? No. Tell us more. No, I spent so much of my life, um, quite honestly, I, I struggled with low self-esteem. And so I, I, was, I was told that I was smart, right? And so the way to get attention that I thought, you know, was to, to, to be smart by doing. Mm. And so I spent so much of my life proving by doing right and i think that's how i ended up in burnout you know what i'm saying because because what happens is you can never do enough right and people get used to that right they get used to you doing so if ever you turn off the doing Ooh. then all of us you've lost your value and sometimes I can't do because I'm tired. Yeah, but you've been doing. So just keep doing and keep doing and keep. Yeah, but I'm tired. Wait, wait, my joints. Yeah, but you've been doing. So keep doing. So now I'm just wearing myself out in every aspect of, of you know, in every aspect possible. So my mental health is now compromised. My physical health is compromised. My emotional health is compromised. So to answer your question, I did not always know that. Right. Uh, because I wasn't leading in the confidence of who I was in the as the expression of God in my being. So if I did. So now I, I can sit halfway across my legs because I <laughs> halfway across my legs or cross them at the ankle and know that my value it, it is because God is. Yes. And just like we have to first believe that he is. I had to first believe that I am. Mm -hmm. And look, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to end up there in the I am, but I, I had to first believe that I am, right? So no, I didn't always know that. And I think the wonderful thing about God is that he'll meet us where we are. And mm -hmm. so if he got to meet us in burnout, he's that kind of, he's good like that. He'll meet us in burnout. He'll meet us in toe up from the flow up. You know, he'll meet us in those low places in the dry places to help us to understand, wait a minute. So you, so you thought you were sufficient of yourself. So you trusted in, you know, not to go scriptural in the arm of the flesh yeah. you know, that, that uh, what, what life people had designed for you was going to get you to where you need to be. You trusted in all of that and only to find that you ended up here. So my dad used to say, the end justifies the means. Mm -hmm. In other words, the outcome, excuse me, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The outcome validates the process. And so if I ended up in a low place as an outcome, if I ended up burned out as an outcome, there was something wrong with my process. So I had, to, it was in that outcome, the, the adverse you know, uh, effect of the process 
that I learned that something is wrong with the process. Right. So to answer your question, no, I wasn't always there. I was not quite honestly. I was far from there. I feel like you were in my prayer time this this morning. Oh, wow. This morning, because literally this morning I had the thought and it came to me how burnout saved my life. Wow. Wow. Absolutely. And, and I hadn't always thought about my burnout experience in that way. Okay. I thought about the cost and the consequences and there were there are costs mm-hmm. and consequences. Mm-hmm. And that moment was my turning point. Yeah. That moment was my yeah. awakening moment. That moment, it was because of burnout that I was willing to see myself beyond everything I had done, everything I had accomplished, the degrees, the experience, the titles. Right. It was because of burnout that my eyes were open. So when you talk about God will meet you, he will meet you in the midst of whatever the disruption yeah. is. Yeah. So yeah. let me just say this, because when we talk about disruption, we mean sometimes you need a disruption. Disruption Absolutely. can be divine. Absolutely. I that that is. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. brings you to the point where you need to be so that you can heal and so that you can become aware of who you are and who you were created. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And then you talked about proving by doing. We got to highlight that because so many of us are doers. Mm -hmm. We're doers. We are nurturers. We want to save people. We want to be the one you depend on. We want to answer the problem. We want to take care of folks. And then we get burnt out. We we realize you got to realize that you train people how to treat you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You train people how to treat you. So if everybody in your life is expecting you to show up, friend, who is the common denominator? Right. Who taught them? Right. So the proving by doing so many of us, especially accomplished women. Mm-hmm. Well, they, and, 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 and if I can share this with you, just an uh, honest part of my story, um, I, I, you know, I think about uh, even in for the benefit of your audience, I think about even in my marriage, you know, yeah. sometimes that proving by doing ha- is uh, led, of course, with the low self-esteem, but also the comparing to the other, right? And so I thought, you know, my uh, former husband was in, uh, we had a construction company and I'm thinking, you know, he's going to meet all these beautiful women. Mm-hmm. So, here I, I bring to the equation low self-esteem. Now I'm going to compound that with comparing myself to these beautiful women. Come on. But I tell you what, this is what I say. They can't outwork me. Mm. Well, that was set up. Mm. You, you, so again, the equation, low self-esteem, comparing myself to another, right? And how I respond to that by overdoing. Dr. Richie. <sighs> so like you say, it, it ain't nobody fault but mine. I, I, I have to own that. I have to own that. So in the undoing, you know, a lot of things were undone, not just the behavior, right? I mm-hmm. had to undo even the attitude, right? Or the approach of comparison and the attitude of low self-esteem. So a lot of things had to be undone. So when we talk about disrupting burnout, we are talking about undoing. We're talking about a real revolution, a yeah. personal revolution. And I think about the more uh, civilized we have become as a humanity, the more technologically we have become as a society, technologically advanced we've become, the more prone, so the, the, the more prone we become to burnout. Yes, ma'am. The the thing that was supposed to bring convenience, right, has led us to a sick society. Mm, mm -mm. Right? So the more cultured we're supposed to be, 
how do we end up at this place of sickness, yeah. right? And so I think that what is, when I think of disruption, I think of running an interference with what is the natural evolution. So, so uh, you know, I, I go back to, to my spiritual leader who talks about, it's not evolution. We don't need an evolution. We don't need evolution. You know, evolution is a natural progression of society that's going to kill us, right? It is the evolution that is uh, increasingly taking us to a place of, of, of burnout in yeah. our case. What we need is a revolution. Come on. We need to turn this thing back around, right? And where do we end up when we turn it around? Well, of course, I, I, I think of the biblical text, right? What was Adam's experience mm. before the fall? Adam could design a life, right, for himself that, that would uh, end in a healthy place. After the fall, however, now you got to work. Now, wives, you got to submit. All this, you understand? We see all this stuff. Things were working in harmony. Mm. Now we got this hierarchy. Yeah. Right? And in the hierarchy, we have this relationship where one is now trying to fight for this or have power over this. And, and, and one is trying to do this. It's, it's this relationship of doing. Ooh. Right. But before the fall, so we don't need an evolution. We need a revolution. We yeah. need to turn this thing back around mm -hmm. to the place where when I think of the authorities and the powers that God had given to Adam, the power to name and what you call it. That's what it is. Yes, ma'am. The ma power to subdue. And listen, none of this had to do with work. Work wasn't even brought into the picture until Adam lost sight of who he was. Right. And so when we lose sight of who we are, now we end up doing this extra work. We tr did so much of the doing. Right. So the disruption of the burnout is not just stop doing. It's a recall of who you were designed to be. Come on. All you're doing is changing places. So I'm not going to do over here, but I'll overdo over there. I'm not going to do it. So I, I think I'm disrupting when really I'm just uh, evolving gr into more of this false balance. So not over here, but over here, not over there, but over there, not over there, but over there, just doing in a different location or doing in a different way. Mm. So I, for me, this journey that I'm on, it is it, it, this ING, which, which, you know, it's the disrupting, you yeah. know, uh, present continuous it is a it is a journey where i am constantly reminding myself of who i am so lead with that so i'm not doing to to gain value yeah. but the value is in the fact that god is and i am as he is oh my goodness <laughs> I just want to scream. Okay, hold on. Okay, Th there was a song. Donald Lawrence wrote a song called "Let's Get Back to Eden and Live on Top of the World." That's that. Donald Lawrence is my boy, by the way. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. And you, so you, because when you said Adam was told to name, yeah, he was told to subdue, and he was told to replenish, most and have dominion, absolutely, and have dominion. Yes. <laughs> I was just having a conversation earlier this week. Um, I told you I got my little, I'm not going to call her name, but I got my little fur baby down here. If okay. I call her name, she's going to want to be a part of our conversation. Okay. But one of the things that I learned from her is she wakes up when the sun comes up. Before that, she doesn't cry. She doesn't whine. She doesn't want any attention. She wants to be left alone. She wakes up when the sun comes up. And when the sun goes down, she goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if the TV's on. It doesn't matter if a light on is on. Okay. When the sun goes down, okay. she is out for the night. Okay. And okay. it has taught me that we have natural rhythms mm -hmm. that were created in us okay. when God created us mm -hmm. to keep us safe, to keep us healthy, right. to help us right. be who we were called to right. be. 
and we have completely left Ooh. our natural rhythms because of technology, the light bulb. So now we don't have to go to sleep when the sun goes down because we got our own light. We right, our right, own light. right, right. We can add Netflix and TV and, an and 24 hour news cycles. We have developed ourselves oh, into my. burnout. My. We have developed we ourselves. We have evolved into, into burnout, right. Right. It's a rock bottom. Right. So in order to disrupt burnout, in order to have that purpose flow from us, we've got to get back. We've got to go back to who we were originally right. created That's right. That's right. to be. Oh, my God. This right. is so right. This right. is so powerful. That's right. That's right. And you just blessed me. I have to say that. Look at you. What you say? The light bulb, you know, the phones, all of that, right? Yes. Social media, right? Yes. And and um, I think um, just in, in line with this whole notion of Adam giving the authority to name, mm -hmm. right? Adam... Those authorities, these are the same same authorities that an entrepreneur has. So I, I think of Adam as the first entrepreneur, right? And I also think about how, um, as an entrepreneur, I'm not just speaking of one who owns an organized business. I'm speaking of one who is the entrepreneur of their lives. Mm -hmm. And too often, people allow their employer to be the entrepreneur of their lives. So now the employer names what time you wake up. The employer names what time you go to bed. The employer names what time you come in. They name your job description, not just your job description. They name how you, they name the methodology for how you get the job done, right? And so I think the disruption is to take that back from whomever it is that we have given it to. You know, people live, I, I often, and that to me is true forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, I recall a friend asking me, you know, what is forgiveness to you? And and I, you know, I tried to give her the basic uh, forgive and forget. And she said, I, I need more. And I, and I thought about how uh, the Girl Scouts, right? and how, or, or anybody who is uh, involved with a campaign, a sales campaign, how they will often have a line item and next to that line item, they'll have a blank line. And you go down the list and people have created their lives in that way. Mm -hmm. That's problematic because they have put my peace and they make somebody responsible for that. And they put my joy, and that's my husband right there. And uh, my security, oh, okay, my, my mom and dad, um, or uh, my well-being, mm, okay, who's that one? And all they got all these things down the line. Some of it is their employer, my financial freedom, my employer, right? And I think forgiveness is to erase all those names. So now I don't have any expectation of you. Oh my goodness. Right? This, this is not your responsibility. Mm -mm -mm. Right? Now that's not to say that people don't add to, you know, to our lives in important and meaningful ways. But it is not your responsibility to design my life so that I don't end up in burnout. Oh my goodness. That's not your responsibility. And so too much of the the uh too much of the of that, right? The, the responsibility, uh, the ownership is given to people outside of God in us. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my gosh. Right? That's so good. That's so good. I often say that you are your first advocate. You yeah. are your first. If you don't value you, how do you expect other people absolutely to value you absolutely. and taking back that responsibility? Because the truth of the matter is no other human can do it for you anyway. 
it's an unfair expectation. It really is. And and I like I I uh, did a post one time that you know are you looking for a savior among those who need a savior? Come on, right. Dr. Richie. <laughs> <Ritchie. laughs> you are, you know, how how often do people do that though? Is, is that not real? It's so real. It's so real. Right. Oh, I love that you equate that to forgiveness. Uh, and I appreciate that because I speak with a lot of professionals who are disappointed, disgruntled, frustrated, not just with their current employer, but with their entire career field. Check they the are. Sponsorship sheet. Yes. Check the sponsorship sheet. You know, check it. Whose name do you have next to that? Because, you know, if you listed someone's name with the expectation that they provide that for you, yeah, disappointment is inevitable. So then it's my responsibility to forgive and to heal. Yeah. And to take ownership of your God-given authority to mm -hmm. name. Right. And that doesn't mean that we can't name in concert with someone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for marriage. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that uh, you name, I name. And because we've give, been given as individuals rights to name that we can't live in harmony. That's, right. that's not what I'm saying as a union. Mm -hmm. Right. However, I'm not coming into this experience with the expectation that you do the work that I should be doing. Now that is unfair. I'm looking for you for peace when I should be doing that healing work. Yeah, that's unfair. Mm. I've done it. We, we yes, many of us have done it. Yes, ma'am. It it all goes back to identity. It's mindset work. You know, we all we often think I need to do something else. I need to what's the next thing I need to do? We're always right. trying to escape right. to the next thing. Right. But the escape is not going to work. Yeah. You have to know who you are. If yeah. it doesn't start with identity, then everything you build is on shaky ground. It's true. It's true. And that's why, you know, when you asked, as we led with the podcast, who are you? You know, that was important for me yeah. to lead with with the identity of who I am and not what I do. Yeah. And again, this is something that I have to remind myself on a daily basis. You yeah. know, it's it's present and continuous, as I said. Listen, I know it's been a while since I came to you in this way, but I've got something to share with you. You all know that I'm in the process of writing this book. And as I'm doing this, there are strategies and ideas and, and thoughts that are coming to me that I've never had. And I'm so full. I can't wait to get it to you. And the book is coming this year, but I can't wait until then. I'm seeing the evidence in my life and in the lives of folks that I'm coaching one-on-one. -on -one. And God has laid it on my heart to create something for folks who may be interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, but you can't afford it. It doesn't fit into your budget. Or maybe you're curious about coaching, but you've never had that experience before. This is for folks who feel like you're marching in place. Like you're putting in all the effort, but you're not moving forward. You feel buried and you're ready to move into brilliance. I'm ready to share. I've, I've got some strategies. I've got some things to work through with you. Listen, friends, this is not going to be fancy. There's no fancy sales page. There's no course platform. This is going to be us meeting once a month through Zoom for me to pour out to you what I have and to support you in your journey. That's it. That's it. Um, this is 40, uh, not 40. This is 30, 30 bucks a month. And in, there has to be some kind of investment or I, I've learned that people don't show up. Right. But at that level, you deserve $30 a month. You can find $30 a month. So if you have wanted to work with me, but just couldn't find it in your budget, if you've been curious about coaching and just not sure if it was a good fit for you, jump in on the Heartwork Academy 2023. I have, if, even if we worked together before, friend, you ain't seen this yet. You haven't seen this yet. I am so ready. I'm so full. 
and I'm ready to share with you and I'm ready to support you. Okay. So listen, if you're interested, join with the link here, um, fill out the form, join us in the Heartwork Academy. We'll kick off in May. We'll meet once a month on Zoom and we're going to walk this thing out together. Nothing fancy, but let's just get it done. It's time for you to live in brilliance. You need to know what it means to show up in purpose every day. And I'm ready to help you. All right. I can't wait to hear from you and I'm excited to serve you. I'll see you soon. Bye, (laughs) y'all. Let's talk about the continuous for a moment because I I want people to know what you just said is important. This is an ongoing experience. You don't just disrupt burnout one time and then you're done and you never have to see it again, right? Right. Right. We continue on this path. So how do you continue to keep yourself focused on who you are in God and to stay away from being burnt out and overrun and overwhelmed? A lot of it is environment. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, I have com- I am committed to a circle. Right. Uh, that supports me in my journey. I can tell you that I have friends who lead with conversations. You know, when I call, hey, beautiful. You yeah. know, hey, sunshine. Right. And 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 the same, you know, whether even it there's some positive expression, they're going to send me. Uh, a positive reel, something, you know, I thought about you and, uh, and, and here's something. So a lot of it is environment. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of it is what we consume. A lot of it, right. Um, People, there's a whole uh, body of research talking about health or I'm sorry, brain foods, right. And seeing the relationship between how we think and what we eat. So I'm working on that as well. Mm-hmm. It is a it is it is a comprehensive package, right? So I can't just do it over here. I'm not working on it in my health, or I'm and and not working on it in the rest that I get, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and or not working on it in uh, physical activity. That is a part of it for me. So all of this, I'm I am designing. And I say I am because it's it's a uh, it requires my being active in that in the in the in the work of designing the life that I know is going to be uh, healthy for me the life that I know is not going to take me to a place of of, of burnout that's not going to end uh, that is not going to create a short lived experience of my purpose in the earth mm-hmm. so. I'm actively designing that. So the continuous is my commitment to be active in the process of designing that life. And I say what you it either happens by default or by design. So if you don't design it, then you got to live with it in default. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, that has been very important for me on this journey. I I was thinking about breakfast this morning and I asked myself, you know, I understand that what I do right now, the life I create or design right now in the selection of the foods that I put in this skillet, right? It's going to, it's going to lead to a particular outcome. Mm. I don't design it. Then there are people who are counting on the, on the default, so you got health systems, right, available for yes. those who didn't design a life of health. You've got counselors who are waiting for us to end up in burnout and then need that level of uh, resuscitation. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to call it support. I'm talking about resuscitation, right? And in this life, and I, I tend to think of it as, you know, we have the preventative. We have the curative, and then we got the resuscitative. Mm. The it's gotten so bad that you done killed yourself. I mean, yeah. that you have voluntarily committed, or in some cases, unknowingly, just killed yourself. And now you need um, somebody to come along. Now you need, whereas in one instance, we, we could have had uh, a Dr. PBJ, right, to come along with the preventive. But preventative, 
-hmm. And then we could have had a Dr. PBJ to come along, even in the curative. And then because we dismissed the value of what she was offering, now we need somebody to, now we need a Jesus to come along and, <laughs> and raise you up from the dead. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so I say that because that is important in terms of how we design our lives. We have the opportunity to make these choices and every choice that we make today is going to have continuous impact. So you talk about how do we work, how does the continuous work, right? Or how do we continue to do the work? I don't even want to say do the work or how do we allow this continuum to flow in our lives? Part of it is understanding that what I do right now Mm -hmm. It's going to have a lasting impact. <sighs> it, so it is not necessarily in doing as, it, as much as it is in understanding that what I do is going to have a lasting impact. So, you know, it's not that I got to do today and do tomorrow and do the next day. Sometimes I can do something right now or be intentional about the choice I make right now and understand that if I if I execute right now in, in a healthy way, or if I execute out of the identity of the I am, then that's gonna have lasting impact. Mm -hmm. I'll at least have it as a point of reference, if nothing else. You, you yeah. see what I'm saying? I, then I got something to recall. And I'm gonna give you another, because I told you that's that's who I am now. I love it. When I think about Jesus on the cross and the two thieves that were there with him, and he, and and one thief asked, if it I think it was two thieves, yeah. Mm -hmm. One thief asked, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was not just think about me, but to remember. Think about the difference between dismember and remember. So dismember is disconnected from purpose, disconnected from, from the identity of who I'm called to be in the earth. So remember for me and disrupting burnout is to reconnect me to my divine purpose. Dr. Come on. It's not just, oh, oh, I had a thought about, or I considered that again. No, 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 no. Remember, got to be deeper than that, because when you're at a, a place of burnout, the healing is in reconnecting to our true identity. So remembered, because burnout is to be dismembered. Yes. On purpose. That's the way, you know, as I think about it, burnout is dismembered from purpose dismembered from the identity of the I am. And I ain't got to do Jack else. Come on. I'm still that. I don't have to do anything else. I still have value. I, I don't have to do anything else. My life is still worth living. I don't have to do anything else. I have meaning in this earth and space. And it's significant to the human experience, mm. right? And Anything outside of that, we've been dismembered and we need, we need to be remembered. 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 Yeah. And, and, yeah. and you talk about how we do that. And that is, that is why I said so much of it is environment. I, I can recall how um, when I was going to FIU, Florida International University, and my mom was an administrator there. And at the time I didn't, I wasn't, my relationship with my mom wasn't so pleasant. I didn't like her, mm -hmm. truth be told. However, and she knew it. And she knew I was struggling, right? I was upset because I got to go to FIU, right? Because I had flunked out at Valdosta, right? And she said, look, <laughs> look, you're bringing your butt home. Uh -huh. so I was angry. You know, I'm somewhere I don't want to be. But every morning she would say to me, the Lord has perfected everything concerning you. And I closed the door, like whatever. 
and the next morning, the Lord has perfected everything concerning you. And I closed the door. One day that thing took root. So environment is important. You know, there was, a, I, I gotta be driving from home to FIU with my mom. And I gotta hear her speaking positivity over my life and, and declaring favor on my life. She would say, favor is your servant. Come on. She would say things like that to me. She would say to me, you are the head and not the tail. I'm upset now. So I ain't really checking for what she's saying. But one day it took root in my awareness. Well, here's the thing. It was taking root before I was aware. Yes. But it took root in my awareness. And I started to think, wait a minute. So everything concerning me is perfected? Wait a minute, that God has done that? And look. I went through a whole marriage forgetting it, reverting back to the doing. Talk to us. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so again, um, these experiences in our lives, these valleys that we, we you know, and, and places that we sometimes find ourselves, whether it's unhealthy relationships, whether it's jobs, the, sometimes they are, instruments oh this this is good they are instruments of dismemberment come on but healing is the, <laughs> it's the children's bread do you hear me so we are uh in in the midst of the dismemberment there's a god who loves us and say look i i, I care too much about you to leave you in that place let me reconnect you to purpose Mm -hmm. And let's do, let's root you in purpose. That's one thing to just be connected, right? But these instruments of dismemberment, if, if, if you just connected, you know, lightly, if you just hang on by a thread, right? Um, there's the possibility of dismemberment again. And, mm -hmm. and it happens. Listen, you, you know, uh, who was that? Who was that? Was it Shirley Ralph? They said, how did you get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. <laughs> right? How did I get back to this place? I ain't yeah. supposed to be here. So you find yourself sometimes repeating a cycle. Mm. Um, and so again, um, we got to get rooted in purpose so that the likelihood of burnout is, is we lessen the chances of that. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. And I'm talking it, but it's first to me too. You know, I have to continue uh, reminding myself that I have to make sure that I'm uh, in the environment where where my purpose is affirmed. I have to make sure of that. I have to make sure that I provide that for other women who who may be looking to me for that. So I bring on the Dr. PBJ. Come on, Dr. PBJ. You know, talk to us. I have to, I, I in uh, and so I'm very particular about you know, my environment and the environment that I create for others who are relying on me mm -hmm. as an example, yeah. right? Not as a sponsor of their peace, but as an example of what this can look like for their life. I'm <laughs> lost for words. <laughs> no, you're not. Never Dr. PBJ, oh. never Dr. PBJ. First of all, let me just, um, I need to receive, I need to receive that word okay. um, that your mother spoke to you, that God has perfected everything, everything concerning me. And you want to know something? So if God has perfected everything concerning you, I'm going to leave you for a second to, to just absorb. Then where is the flaw? It's in this, it, it, the flaw it's really a false ideology that is inherent in the dismemberment. So when I'm connected to purpose, then I can experience the perfection that God has done concerning me. And I'm, I'm not, I don't speak of perfection as in won't make a mistake, not needing to be corrected or adjustments. But I mean as a lifestyle. 
Mm-hmm. As a way of life and as an identity. Mm-hmm. That's that's different. Right? So if he has perfected everything concerning me, where is the flaw? Where's the flaw? Where's and I see people talking about, you know, I embrace myself flaws and all. That's problematic. Come on. For me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because in perfection, I don't have any flaws. And I, I know that that is like that. People might find that hard to understand in the same way that I couldn't understand that I was Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, in the same way that, you know, so people have a problem with understanding that we have everything we need, that we are enough. You know, because a flaw says something else needs to be added. Something else needs to be done. And I think we have to be watchful of these cliches that we that people sometimes embrace that are really of the world of of, yeah. this, of the world of dismemberment and the world of burnout. So you're steadily trying to do more. If there's a flaw, that means I gotta do something. No, uh-uh. Dr. PBJ, I have decided that by the grace of God, I, I no, give me God, give me what he says about me. Yeah. Yes. And what he said, what he said was be perfect as I am perfect. You are enough. Nothing else needs to be added. Nothing you you understand what I'm saying? In, yeah. And you know, I started thinking about that. You know, and, and um even and there's so many stories you said you would just go hold on, you can tell this excites me. But this this is this is um this is beautiful. The conversation. I, I don't see this as a podcast. I see this mm-hmm. as shared sisterhood. Yes. And other people get to listen to our conversation. They get the benefit of that. But yeah. I, I see this as us just sister girls talking, you mm-hmm. know, and not just talking, but the engaging in meaningful, wholesome, healthy, healing, healing exchange. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I recall um, on July 14th, it was the day before my birthday, and I started having a moment and nothing could satisfy me. I wanted sugar. Mm -hmm. I just wanted sugar. Like, where's a cake? My God, jeez, some donuts, please. Can I have some chocolate? And I just sat for a moment and said, God, what's going on? What's happening to me right now? And God spoke to me and said, this is not unfamiliar to you. You know exactly what's going on. Um, And I recalled when I would be in relationships and when I felt rejected, I would resort to comfort foods. Mm -hmm. I'd get in my car and drive, Mm -hmm. drive a Krispy Kreme. Yes, ma'am. Oh, hot donuts now. Hot right now. I'll take a dozen of your glaze, please. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. You you don't like me, bro. All right. Me and this Krispy Kreme donut. We're going to work it out. Because it always likes me. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So I said, hang on. Wait a minute. In that moment on July 14th, and God really did speak to me and said, How can you be rejected Mm. when you are accepted in the beloved? Wait, wait, we ain't through. How can you be rejected when in me you are the beloved? The only time you can be rejected is when you step out of your divine self. Oh, shoot. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. I had to give that thing some thought. Do you know, Dr. PBJ, do you know, I, when I when I came to that awakening and that understanding and, and place of enlightenment, do you know I have not had that experience since? Because I know I, I can identify you, babe. 
See, mm -mm. no, we don't. Uh, uh, we don't embrace. We don't embrace. We don't do rejection. Uh huh. No, I'm accepted in the beloved. Okay, so hold anything, on. Anything <laughs> you understand? That? No, 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 no. We don't do rejection because yeah. I am the beloved. Here's here's what you did, Dr. Richie. This is so important because here at Disrupting Burnout, we talk about what is your tell, T-E-L-L. -L. Okay. What is your tell? What is your sign or your symptom? Okay. And that you need to pay attention to because most of the time when we found ourselves in burnout, there have been signs along the way, but we have ignored the signs and we okay. haven't paid attention, okay. right? So okay. in that moment, Okay. Right in in that in that moment in that craving, which okay. I'm very familiar with, instead of focusing on the craving, you said, "Wait a minute, what is this? What is this? I, I acknowledge the tell, but it's telling me something. Okay, your tell okay. tells you something. Okay, right. Okay. So it, by acknowledging the tell, you recognize that this ain't about sugar. This is about rejection. And then you took the lie that rejection was trying to tell you okay. and you replaced it with the truth. You That's said, right. I'm not rejected. That's right. I am accepted because That's I right. am the beloved. That's right. And that is the process. When we talk about the ING, okay, that okay. is the process. You okay. got to recognize the sign. Okay, okay. Your body, your soul, your spirit speaks to you. And Absolutely. it lets you know when you are in crisis, when something is not aligned, we're not in the right place. And when we pay attention to that sign and we question it, why are you here? Uh -huh, uh -huh. How did you get here? Nobody's <laughs> supposed to be here. <laughs> Why are you here? That's and then, right. When you recognize the lie that it's trying to tell you, you replace that lie with the truth. That's right. And the truth makes you free. And that's, that's right. why you haven't had that experience. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, you got to go. Uh-uh. Not here. Not here. Not here. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Who's Dr. Richie? Listen, this... <laughs> We could go on and we absolutely. might. <laughs> we can okay. go on, but we got to let the people go. Okay. okay. Please tell them how can they hear more from you, connect with you, because I know that there are people who say, look, I need to find this woman. Okay. I need to listen okay. to her. So okay. how do they follow you and hear more from you? I would, uh, of course, I'm on Facebook, Dr. Alicia Ritchie, uh, name as it's spelled on the screen. Uh, you can also uh, check out my website, A Rich. That would be A R I T C H at a rich enterprise, A R I T C H enterprise.com. Mm -hmm. A rich at a rich enterprise. And part of what I talk about in designing is what I do with women who are interested in business, helping them design a business um, that doesn't lend to burnout, helping them design a business that doesn't lend to them throwing in the towel to say, I, I give up. I'm um, helping them design a business where we identify purpose mm -hmm. um, and what you're called to do and and how you can serve out of purpose and the identity of of uh, of God's expression of excellence in the earth. And while I don't um, it's while it's not considered a faith based business, I am uh, a faith based believer. And so um, everything I touch has elements of, of uh, the expression of God in it. Yes. Or is the expression of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, I know after this time together that you all are set on fire and you can begin to see the dismembering experiences mm -hmm. of your life and you are recognizing where you need to be remembered. Mm -hmm. reconnected to purpose and your true identity and being the beloved of God. And I know that this is going to bring healing. I know it's going to bring deliverance, but I also know that it's going to bring forth purpose. So I am so excited that you all have joined us for this conversation and you need to connect with Dr. Richie. You need to follow her on Facebook. You need to reach out to her so that you can experience more of the God in her. Dr. Richie, thank you so much for joining us. It's always it's an honor. honor. Thank you for having always me. It's an honor. Friends, as always, you know that you are powerful, you are significant, and you are loved. Absolutely. Love always, PBJ. See you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.